All right. Uh, thank you all so much for logging in tonight and joining us for our first elementary school council meeting on Zoom. Um, we had our last council meeting the day before school closed. So it's certainly been a whirlwind in all of our lives um, since we were last together. Um, I'd like to start tonight's meeting with a big thank you. Um, thank you to our administration, to Dr. Montesano, Rachel Kelly, Trisha Murray. You all have done a remarkable job in leading our school during this unprecedented time. You launched remote learning, um, managed and prepared a faculty with a diverse level of technological savviness, made yourselves available to all of our families, and asked us for feedback to help make improvements on the system, all while juggling your own family's needs. So from the bottom of our hearts, we thank you. Another big thank you to our teachers. I know that they aren't logged in tonight, but it's important for all of us to remember that our faculty did not have a single workday to prepare for remote learning before it was up and running. School closed on a Friday and we started remote learning the following Monday. Something that I haven't heard of any other school pulling off. Even the private schools in the city still have their spring breaks. So thank you to our teachers for making it go so seamlessly, providing consistency for our children and structure for the parents. Thank you. You have all poured your hearts and souls into this. Um, with that, prior to the meeting, we've gathered some questions and I've shared those questions with the appropriate speakers and they will be addressing them. If there are any questions that you have uh, during the meeting while people are speaking, if you would please um, write them in the chat section, I will do my best to pass those questions along to the appropriate people. But please keep yourselves muted during this meeting because we've got a, a lot of us here. Um, and with that, I would be passing it on to Dr. Montesano, but Dr. Montesano is with his family because he just became a grandfather. So we have Rachel Kelly tonight. Rachel? Yes, thank you, Dea. Um, I wanna just start off by um, sending our warmest congratulations to Roy. Um, this is not only their first grandchild, but a granddaughter. Uh, Spencer Freddy. So um, we, we all wish him well and, and we're so pleased that he's able to be with his family tonight. Um, so I'm speaking on Roy's behalf this evening. There were a couple of um, topics he'd like me to cover. Uh, first of all, um, Dea, as you uh, referenced, the faculty has been unbelievable. Um, and their dedication and hard work and looking at what they have accomplished in these uncharted waters is really um, outstanding. And I do see actually that there are quite a few um, who have signed on tonight, um, which I think speaks volumes. So thank you for joining us. Um, and just know how, how deeply appreciative um, the school community is for everything you're doing. Um, so we continue to make adjustments as it, as it relates to remote learning. I know that um, Tricia will be speaking to that specifically. Um, we continually receive lots of feedback. Um, as Roy has referenced, it's like Goldilocks and the Three Bears. We get feedback from parents who think that it's way too much. Feedback from parents that say, come on, it's not enough. And other feedback that, you know what, I think you've struck the right balance. So we are continually taking on that feedback and making adjustments um, where we believe it's appropriate. Um, we don't know exactly when we're gonna be opening yet. Um, we are uh, waiting for more guidance from um, the state and specifically the governor's office. We have created a re-entry committee, if you will, um, to strategize all aspects of what that transition back to school will look like. That will be a committee that involves administrators, teachers, um, facilities, security, our medical director, and nurses. And the purpose of that committee is really to think about all angles and to make sure that we are ready to receive our children academically, socially, emotionally, uh, making sure we're taking into account whatever requirements and guidelines may come down as it relates to large gatherings. We don't know how that will impact on our physical education classes, on um, 
are congregating at lunchtime in the cafeteria. And so um, we are going to be strategizing um, all different scenarios until such time that we receive um, the, that guidance from, from state ed. Uh, we're also looking specifically at um, end of year celebrations. Um, we know how important they are and we are looking at how we can um, continue to celebrate um, even if we are still at home. Um, we know that food service remains a priority for many, um, for many of us. And um, this is the time where we are um, expected to go out for a new bid. We have solicited um, uh, feedback from elementary school parents to incorporate into this new bid spec. Uh, we are unfortunately in a little bit of a holding pattern right now, um, only because with school closed, that makes it difficult to have an effective bid process. Um, whether it's construction, food service, very often um, vendors uh, wanna come and see the facilities. They wanna come and see what the current program is like so they can um, envision the potential. Um, we did just late yesterday hear from the state education department that they may be allowing um, a one-year extension for bids that are expired, for um, contracts that are expired. Uh, we will be finding out more about that to determine if that's even um, an option for us. In the meantime, Roy and I were um, able to speak with uh, PTA leadership, Suzette and Leah, and strategizing about next steps with the hope of getting a district-wide committee together so we can have representation from elementary, middle, and high and to help us prioritize next steps. So stay tuned, there's gonna, you know, we'll have more on that. Um, also, you've heard uh, Roy speak to the silver lining in school being closed has actually been our construction. Um, I, uh, I can say that I've, I've seen a lot of construction projects over the 25 years that I've been here, and I've never seen one that is not only on time, but early for now. Um, but certainly being um, out of school has allowed the construction to proceed in a way that it would have been much harder if we were all in the building. Um, so we'll get some pictures out to the community soon so you can see the progress. And I just wanted to end by congratulating um, four tenure candidates from the elementary school. Um, we, uh, it's one of the most important roles that the Board of Education has is granting tenure. And boy, do we have a spectacular cohort this year um, in the elementary school in uh, Anthony Vaglica in physical education, and then um, three special education teachers, Janine Scarmazino, Alexa Vafaitis, and Jessica Wood. Um, spectacular crew, and we're just so pleased that, uh, that um, you are here, and we are uh, privileged that you have had such an impact on so many of our students. So thank you. Rachel, thank you. Um, um, Next, Tricia on remote learning. Sure. Hi, good evening, everybody. Um, it's nice to see you. Um, you know, we, we miss your children so much. And uh, in, in all the, all, every teacher I talk to, they always say, I miss my students, I miss my classroom, and we can't wait to go back. So we, we do miss all of you. We hope that you're well and that you're healthy and safe. Um, these certainly are unprecedented times. I don't think anyone could have had, could have predicted that we'd be in this situation. Um, but, you know, I, just as Rachel said, I'm, I'm incredibly proud of how quickly these teachers got distance learning up and running. Um, they did it without a playbook. And they did it by thinking about what they know works best with kids. And they're trying that out in a virtual platform and their efforts absolutely should be applauded. Um, I also, you know, I want to thank all of you because it is not lost on us how hard this is um, for families at home. Um, being a, a working parent myself with two elementary school aged children at home, um, I, I get it. Um, I get the stress and sometimes the frustration that you feel. Um, so we're here to support you also. Um, and I also have realized how, really how different this is playing out for, for families, depending on your, your situations. And so we are sensitive to that. 
Uh, and also, as Rachel said, we, we get a whole range of feedback of, of people saying, whoa, slow down, we can't, we can't handle this much, and some people really wanting more. Um, so, so trying to hit all those areas can be a bit tricky at times for us. Um, I want to thank the, the grade level chairs for taking the time to collect that parent feedback. That's been really important. Um, it's allowed us to see the patterns across the grade levels. It's allowed us to kind of look and see what are some good ne next steps to take based on, you know, what's playing out at home for these kids. Um, and as I mentioned in my letter on Friday, uh, you know, many of you have this concern about like, is my kid going to be where they need to be by the end of the year? And that's completely valid. And it's our concern too, right, as educators. Um, and, you know, the lessons that the teachers are putting together are working towards end of year benchmarks. So as your child or as your children are working through those lessons, know that that's, that that's the end goal. Um, so really helping them follow along and complete all those is, is important um, if you're able to do so. And we do always assess kids um, at the beginning of a school year. Um, this would not be any different. Um, we will most likely need to make some slight adjustments to our curriculum. I don't anticipate anything major um, because I, I think that, you know, some the, because I, I know that the lesson plans are really solid. So assuming those are being followed, um, probably some slight adjustments. Um, and also what's something that we do really well because we teach in what's called a workshop format where we're always differentiating our instruction. We would rely on that same different, differentiation um, whenever, whenever we return to school. So if we had some gaps to fill for some, certain kids, um, we'd be doing it through small groups, we'd be doing it through one-on-one. -on -one. Um, it's just part of, part of how we teach. So, so I, I feel good about that. Um, the program has really been evolving over these past uh, seven weeks. Can't believe it's actually been seven weeks. Um, but it's really been evolving and the teachers have been layering in new technology and new methods as we go along. Um, so I just want to go over for you and give you an update as to like what's happening right now um, and, and where we're going and what's soon to come. Um, so let me just share my screen real quick. Okay, so um, in thinking about our, in our whole program, I'm looking at it in four different pieces. Um, across instruction, assessment, feedback, and social connection. And I just want to talk about how we're meeting all of those four things. Uh, so for instruction, you know, the tools that we're using um, is, uh, m our major tool we're using is, is Google Classroom. This really is your child's hub for all of their work. Um, this is where all the assignments are coming in, materials are coming in uh, to that place. And then some tools inside of there we're using our Google Slides for, to create instructional videos, um, and also Google Docs that kids are, are doing some work on and where we're explaining some of our teaching. Um, the instructional videos, teachers have gotten very skilled at making really effective, quick uh, films um, that it's really important for kids to watch. Um, I've seen this with my own child is when instructional videos were first coming out, they were really, you know, she was really excited. And then, you know, it's after it's, you know, kind of the novelty wears off um, after time. And I think that it's really important that they watch um, them because frequently teachers will get questions from kids and it's, you know, right there embedded within the video. So just know that, know that those are there um, and, and direct your child towards them, emphasize that your child watches them. Um, we are beginning to use Zoom for instructional purposes. This looks different at every grade level. Um, and mostly in the upper grades, this is gonna resemble something that looks like office hours. Oops, sorry. Hold on one second. Um, it's gonna resemble something that looks like office hours. Um, maybe the, the teacher will ask people to stay on after a morning meeting to go over some math or some a reading lesson. Um, and then in the lower grades, it's, it's gonna look more like small groups um, instruction. So we, we know that um, small group instruction is gonna be more effective than a whole class lesson. So this is our next step with using Zoom for instruction is to see how can we use this tool for, to meet the needs of small groups of kids. Um, some of you may have seen this with your kids. 
Um, and if you haven't yet, um, you will in the coming weeks. And like I said, that is going to vary per grade level. Um, for for uh, assessment, several things are going on. You know, instruction is one piece, but we have to be able to assess kids to know uh, what type of instruction they need next. Uh, one tool we're using for that is Google Forms. This is something that's been really quick and easy for teachers to put out there. It's almost like a little mini quiz um, or a little mini check-in for teachers to know how the work is going for, for students. Um, we also have been using Flipgrid, which has been a really fun tool to use. I think kids have enjoyed it because it allows them to see their classmates and be able to like interact a little bit. Um, Padlet, another one where you can see the whole class in one page and kids can read each other's responses, which has been good and a good way to inform the teacher on what the child is learning. Um, and then Kahoot and Edpuzzle, which are more, you know, kind of make a game um, out of the content. So several things are happening, and also just the regular work, obviously, that, that students are handing in is also a form of assessment. Um, but several things are going on um, to inform us on how the students are doing. Um, and then as far as feedback, it really comes down to two tools. Um, one is Google Docs. Um, so this in the lower grades might look like a writing conference sheet where the, the teacher gives it to the child um, and it points out something that they're doing really well and something to work on next. Um, in the upper grades, it might be the teacher commenting directly on the Google Doc that is, you know, maybe a student's piece of writing. Um, really, if, if you're really encourage your, your child um, in the upper grades to look at that Google Doc, look at the teacher's comments, um, and think about them and think about their, their next steps. Because um, teachers are taking a lot of time uh, putting comments on these docs, and that's important uh, for student learning for them to really pay attention to those. Um, and then the other piece we're using Zoom for, uh, another piece of feedback is, is using Zoom. Um, this would happen in the small group lessons where teachers are giving direct feedback to kids. Um, it could be happening in a writing conference in the lower grades. Um, again, varies across grade levels, um, but if, you know, but one thing that is, that is new that's kind of coming down the line for us. Um, Trisha, yes. um, so when I look at the screen, I see um, assessment feedback, and then there's another, it looks like there's another mm -hmm. column, but everyone's, everyone's face is covering it. So I don't know oh, if other people are having yes. that issue too. Um, you can move that. I think you you can move that bar. Can you move it? Can you pull it over to the left or something? Ah, uh, yes. Okay. So if other people are having the same issue, you can move the people. It's easy to remove it. Or how about if I just do this? Is that better or no? Doesn't matter. No, I, I thought I thought the other way was nice. Okay, so maybe keep it the other way, but so okay. people know that they can move the people. Yeah. You can move the be. people around. <laughs> okay. Um, and then the last piece is you know social connection. Social connection is where the area where we started uh, to really focus on with Zoom. Uh, I think it's helped. I know the teachers have loved seeing the kids. Um, and actually, one teacher made a comment to me that that's like the most normal part of her day is being able to, to get on there and say hello. Um, that's really in the form of, of morning meeting. I know some teachers were doing like a snack time. Um, and also, I'd say the two other tools we're using for that would be like Flipgrid and Padlet. Um, it's not live interaction, but it is interaction where the kids can, can uh, you know, talk or, or, or um, kind of type to each other. Um, so special areas, um, this is music, art, library technology, physical education, science. Um, special areas, special area Fridays was something that we added um, a couple of weeks in, really just to increase the student participation. Um, I think it's, it's been really difficult for families to incorporate it. Um, I realize that uh, many people have asked me if it's optional. Um, I think that we, I think that, that doing the special area Fridays has allowed people to kind of take a break and focus on that, those, those content areas. Um, the work, the system we have going on right now is that the work is posted either on Monday or Tuesday, depending on the special area. And you do not need to look down in the stream on Google Classroom to find it. It's actually right under classwork, like the classwork tab. Um, that's where it lives. You can always go back during the week and find it there. 
Um, and then they all have Google Forms that they're using just so we know that the assignment was done. So submit that so we know that you're working on it. Um, and, you know, like I said, I get that some families are overwhelmed and this kind of could be putting some people over the edge. Um, just complete as many as you can. Complete, you know, try to try to get them in. The teachers have been doing a phenomenal job coming up with really interesting stuff to do. So do as many as you can um, and, and let us know how it goes. Uh, special education. So um, our learning center and our special class teachers have really created a flexible program for each student and they're supporting them in a lot of different ways using a lot of different tools. Um, it's, it's actually hard to go through and explain what they're doing because it just varies so much for every child. Um, and they're being really thoughtful about, you know, goals within IEPs and social emotional goals for kids. And they're, they're trying to really come up with a plan um, that fits. Um, I'm sure you can appreciate how tricky that how tricky this whole scenario is within the realm of special education. Um, but our teachers are really doing an outstanding job. Um, we do have our skills students um, supported with online programs now as well. Um, again, I am hearing from families that that's adding to your workload and maybe you can't do that. Um, again, do the best you can. Um, and, and if you have got time in the day to get on there and do those lessons, please do. Um, I do, I have also heard from, from families of special education students that it can, the, the work or maybe um, the schedule can get a bit hectic. I mean, sometimes a special student may have like three or four Zooms in a day and it can be overwhelming, you know, depending on their special education teacher and then they have their gen ed class or a related service. So if that's the case and you're, they're just having a hard time juggling it, reach out to your special ed teacher and they can help, you know, help you prioritize and, and create a schedule that's going to work. We, we definitely don't want to add to your, you know, your child's stress or your stress level. So just reach out to us and let us know what kind of adjustments need to be made. Um, something that I think is um, incredibly important with our situation is the amount of support we're giving to kids and for um, social emotional needs. Um, I know that this situation has caused uh, anxiety, um, a lot of worries for kids that were about their families. Um, and they were telling us some of that, you know, even before we closed. So I can imagine it's probably gotten worse. Um, and know that we're trying, we're thinking about the best ways to support that. Um, a couple things that we're doing right now are care lessons, um, just as Dr. Vestola was teaching those. Uh, in the classroom, she's recording those lessons and they are posted in the classroom. Um, we are going to experiment with her doing those via Zoom um, and see how that goes. Uh, we, our psychologists have put together a website, which is, um, which is wonderful, has a lot of resources on there, um, posted in the classroom as well. Our social skills groups are continuing, our counseling groups, and we're also reaching out to individual families that we think just need some more support too. Um, and then something I'm really excited about is the is Be Well um, is sponsoring a presentation on May 7th. It's at seven o'clock and it's for parents. Um, and it's really about how to kind of handle your families within with this, um, with our current situation. Um, it's given by Alec Miller. Um, Joyce, are you there? Do you want to tell a little bit about this presentation? Dr. Vestola? Sure. Hi. Hi, everyone. Um, I know everybody's doing the best that they can. This is a, a, an incredibly unprecedented, challenging time. So we were able, I'm very thrilled about this, we were able to um, secure Alec Miller as a speaker for uh, parents next Thursday night at, at 7. And for those of you who haven't... Um, experienced Alec. He's dynamic, he's warm, he's empathic, and he's an, a true expert in the field. He's the, assist, he's the clinical director for uh, cognitive and behavioral consultants in White Plains and, and Manhattan. So the, um, the, he, the title of his talk is called Finding Calm in the Chaos. I think we all can use that. Managing your emotions in the face of the pandemic tips for parents and families. 
and he just uh, gave this presentation last week for the Fairfield schools and uh, it was very well received. We're also um, providing the teachers with a similar workshop, K to five and six to 12, and that will be done by Alicia Dad, who is the CBC clinical uh, consultant to school districts. So we, um, Trisha I, the, and me and the psychologist, we're, we're continuing to talk about how we can best support you and, and certainly our teachers and, and your lovely kids every day. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Joyce. Uh, so another uh, topic we've had to work through is uh, grading um, and how are we going to be not only assessing but also kind of giving a, um, you know, a valuation to all of the work that's been going on. So um, we're, where we are right now is we're going to, so normally our, our report card would have, a, would have four gradients, um, a, a below it, level one, which, was, which is below expectations, level two is approaching, level three is meets expectations, and four is above. Um, you know, given our situation with uh, the distance learning, we think that we're able to take the assignments that we've given and the, and the assessments, plus our work that the, class, that the students have been doing in February and in March, um, and be able to say whether or not a child is either meeting expectations or approaching expectations. Um, and, you know, we think that that's doable um, and gives parents, uh, you know, knowledge as to where their child stands kind of at the end of the school year. Um, and then for the special areas, we're going to be giving a participation grade. Um, either they participated in, in, you know, in most of the lessons or they didn't. So, um, those, that's just our, our current sort of thinking or stance around or grades for this year. And then, you know, I guess you're all probably, you know, thinking about how can you best support your child. Um, there are a lot of things uh, that we can do. Also, of course, the, that presentation Joyce was just talking about, I would attend that for sure because Alex is going to have a lot of uh, advice for you. Um, but as far as kind of managing um, the work situation at home, and, th and these are things I've said before, but make sure that you set up a separate workspace. You know, I know that for my kids, they really, they can't work together, they distract each other. And so just a, se a separate workspace is really, um, is, the, is probably the key if you have more than one child at home. Um, create a schedule and try to stick to it. Um, I know it's hard, but it does make a difference. It puts some sort of normalcy or routine um, to the kid's day. Um, I, I don't know if you've seen these or not, but we have these stays checklists. These are posted in Google Classroom. Um, these are put together uh, by our psychologists. And this is something, so if your child maybe has some executive functioning, um, need some more executive functioning help, this will help with that. So it's a checklist that they can use as they're working through assignments. Um, it's an acronym. Stand, the first one is, the S is for space. So set up a quiet space and put toys or other things away that will distract you. Um, time, I take my time to read and reread the directions. Even talks about giving yourself a little brain break. Um, if you're stuck, ask a sibling or a parent for help. Trish, uh, can you tell us where these, where parents can find these? Yep, so these again? are, these are posted in Google Classroom, the grade level ones under materials. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and then, so yes is say yes to staying on task, really staying focused, and then submit. Did you submit your best work? So this is just the K2 one. There's one for third, fourth, and fifth that looks very similar. Um, but they're good to print out and have next to your child as they're, as they're working. It, will, it helps them become more independent. Um, so some of, some of your, your kids might need that support. Um, and then like take a break when needed, you know, just really follow your child's lead on that. Like if it's hard for them to do all of their work in one chunk of the day, um, separate it. I mean, when you think about the school day, they're not doing all their work in one chunk. They, we, have, we have breaks, we have snack time, we have specials, we have lunch recess, like it's, it's broken up throughout the day. Um, teachers have given a suggested schedule um, I would follow that, right? Because when they create that, they're used, they, they're, 
putting out to you what they know works during the school day. So um, take those breaks. Um, and, and usually after a break, a, a child is refocused and ready to go again. I just want to make a plug for reading. Um, I know that with all of the work that your kids have, have to do, um, reading is so incredibly important. And I, and I just hope that, that it stays kind of front and center uh, for families because we need to keep kids' independent reading levels up too. And, and the more reading that they do, the better. Um, so please make time to read. Please continue to do that. Um, many teachers have online reading logs that they have going. And then like my last piece of advice is just reach out. Like if your child is struggling, reach out to your child's teacher um, because these teachers will, you know, want to do anything for your kids to be successful. Like they'll, they'll, they'll come up with a schedule for you or they'll, you know, just kind of try to talk about a, what the problem is and see if some adjustments can be made. But um, every time that the parents reach out to a, a, a teacher, it has helped. So if, if you need some more support, um, please let us know. Thanks, Trisha. Yep. Um, I've been monitoring the chat, so, uh, and yep. I don't know if it's because more people have popped in, but can you go over again um, the live virtual instruction and when that's going to start and what it's sure. going to look like? Because we've sure. gotten a few questions on that. Sure. sure. Um, so the live virtual instruction is going to look differently for every grade level. Um, and when I say instruction, I don't mean a whole class lesson, right? So it's not like we're going to, it's not that type of instruction. Um, because well, there are many reasons for that, but I think that it is um, difficult sometimes to teach, you know, a class of, you know, 20 kids um, a le content for the first time in that format. Um, something that I think that we think is going to work well is after they look at the video and they look at that instruction on the video, um, teachers can follow up with some small groups so they can follow up with what they're called, what are called we're calling office hours really um, in the upper grades. So what that is good, might look like is after a morning meeting, a teacher could say, you know, stay on if you need support with this and the teacher can go over the concepts. Um, so if you have not seen that yet, um, you will um, in, the, in the next couple of weeks um, as teachers really are, start to kind of experiment with it. Um, and then, you know, in the lower grades, um, they're talking, we're talking about doing it a little bit differently. Um, some are more like group, could be group writing conference, but again, it's small groups, um, really targeted instruction for specific kids and their needs. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Rachel, can I ask you a question? Uh, a parent has asked about summer school. Have you heard anything about it? Would it potentially be used to make up lost ground or get ahead of a potential another wave of social distance, extensive social distancing in the fall? Wait, you're on mute. Hold on. Um, Sorry. Okay, perfect. <laughs> At least I hadn't said too much. Um, so we typically offer a summer program for our special education students, primarily those who in, are in our special classes. Um, and there is criteria uh, for participation in those summer programs in terms of um, preventing substantial regression. Uh, we really are hoping if I had a magic wand, we absolutely would be back in session, you know, providing we can do it safely. But again, we have to hear from the state on that. Um, the other uh, piece that we have historically offered is a learning center summer program. We're not mandated to do that, um, but we have offered just 10 sessions throughout the month of July to help our students who um, have some learning issues, just keep some momentum going throughout the school year. Um, in terms of this summer, one, we don't know if we're gonna be able to be back in session, but we're beginning to have conversations in-house in terms of um, what we can offer, um, if it's remote or if it's in-house uh, for our students who were concerned um, gaps may be widening. So we're having those conversations now. 
Um, in the high school, I know that um, the conversations in the high school are very different. They are being um, told very, teachers are saying very clearly, we're not giving you work over the summer. Like you need a break and we don't want that added pressure for, for the high school students over the summer. So we're having those conversations in every school um, and, and taking into account what's developmentally appropriate. Um, thank you. And is the district considering staggering instruction for the fall or where students come in say two days a week and have remote learning three days a week? Is there any insight on any of that? So again, we um, need to um, adhere to any uh, requirements or guidance coming down from the state, and we have not received that yet. Um, you know, we, we will pull off school any way we can, as providing we can do it safely. And so whether that's staggering, whether it's in AM, PM sessions, um, you know, any, anything's possible until such time that we have a better handle on, on what our requirements are. And do you have any indication, um, you know, what the timeline is when we'll hear more information or it's whenever Cuomo decides to share it with all of us? Yeah, I mean, you know, it wouldn't surprise me just based on what I'm hearing, um, which is what you're all hearing, is that he opens up upstate before he opens up here. Um, I have a sneaking suspicion that the five boroughs and Nassau and Suffolk and Westchester will be the last, um, given the number of, of cases and um, we've had here. Um, but it's hard to tell when we're going to hear. Um, and uh, thank you. I'm sort of trying to read questions at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and then Trisha, do you yeah. know, are we considering testing students at the end of the school year to see if they qualify for sort of some of the learning sessions um, or summer school opportunities? Are we? I'm not sure what those summer school opportunities would be, as Rachel said. Um, I mean, we are, um, like, like I was saying, we are assessing um, we are, we are continuing to talk more about assessments as we go along and trying to find a way to do that effectively. Um, I'm sure you can you know, imagine it's, it can be quite challenging, especially if you're trying to give a reading assessment. Um, I, I was just talking with K-2 teachers about how to use RAS kids to possibly do that. Um, but we're, we're working through it. Um, I, I have to say nothing's gonna replace an in-person running record to assess reading though. Um, I'm not sure how accurate it will be, but we're going to do, we'll do our best, um, but we'll, we'll see. We're, we're, we're discussing it. I'm not sure, I'm not sure the, the best, um, the best way to do it quite yet. I don't know if any districts figured it out. <laughs> um, I'm in a lot of talks with some other Westchester elementary principals, and it's, it's something we're definitely grappling with. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so we're going to be moving on to the committee reports. Uh, first, it will be Annabella Davis. She's the incoming elementary school council chair. Annabella. Uh, thank you, Daya. Um, hello, for those of you that don't know, don't know me, my, my name is Annabella Davis, and I have a first grader, a fourth grader, and a sixth grader at the Bronxville School. Uh, parents, I hope you and your families are doing well during these unprecedented times. Uh, as I'm sure you might have seen the emails, the PTA has started preparing for next year by filling out um, all of next year's volunteer positions. And on behalf of the PTA, I would like to thank all the parent volunteers that we have this year and all the ones that have committed for next year uh, for the various committees and roles. Um, and all the ones that are going to be volunteering for new roles and new committees. Um, I would like to say that the elementary school council, which is the arm of the elementary school of the PTA, is looking for volunteers in the following committees. We need volunteers for the art exhibits committee, uh, the Memorial Day logo contest, and we need one more volunteer for the skate club. If you would like to volunteer in this capacity or in any other way, please feel free to reach out to me. 
Um, and also note that we'll finalize the placement for class parents uh, sometime in August once the class lists for next school year are out. Um, thank you. Daya? Thanks, Annabella. Um, okay, so I'm going to be giving the rest of the updates um, because with Zoom it's a little bit easier to have one speaker. Um, Remote BASC. The BASC group has set up uh, BASC at home. Currently, it's running in two-week increments. They are working on getting some parent feedback. So if your kids have been participating and you have thoughts on how it's working, please reach out to Katie McGrath. She'd love to hear your thoughts. Um, it appears to be well attended. And uh, Katie wanted me to share the news that Heather Scholes will be the new BASC parent liaison for next year. So thank you, Katie and Heather, and thank you for putting together all this, um, all the programs. They're really fabulous. Um, Memorial Day. Uh, so Heather Scholes asked me to update all of you on Memorial Day. Um, we are so incredibly fortunate to have such a supportive um, group of local businesses who do so much for our community and the PTA. Now more than ever, the PTA is asking you uh, to help support these businesses. This year, in lieu of gathering together for Memorial Day events, we invite all families to distance together on Memorial Day, Monday, May 25th. We encourage all Bronxville families to take their Memorial Day festivities outside, while so social distancing, of course, uh, for a picnic or a barbecue. The PTA will be selling Bronxville Together bags for $50, the reusable canvas bags will include Bronxville logo merchandise, fun patriotic items for your Memorial Day festivities, as well as a $25 gift card to any business within the Bronxville Chamber of Commerce. And there's no need to cook. Several restaurants will be offering picnic friendly to go dinners and desserts for curbside pickup. More details to follow. Um, and we're also working on reimagining other Memorial Day traditions and welcome your input. So if you have any thoughts, please send an email to memorialday at bronxvillepta.org with thoughts or questions. We look forward to seeing many of you on social media. Please use hashtag Bronxville together. Um, thank you to Heather and to the rest of the PTA for working on putting this all together. It'll be lovely. Um, I got a message on the chat from, uh, uh, from Rebecca Todd asking me to remind all of you that the yearbooks are on sale um, on Membership Toolkit and the delivery we don't have information on yet, but please order your yearbook. Um, before, before I close, Tricia, are you seeing other questions that we should be addressing yeah i just answered a couple in the chat box okay uh, um more questions about summer we don't know what's happening over the summer yet so it's it's hard to answer that until we know more um and then like what precautions are we taking when school show which school starts up again is also you know as rachel said there's a committee that's being formed that's really going to start to think about a, a solid plan to put in place for when we go back and, and what that would look like um so i guess more unanswered questions but yes we're we're thinking about all the precautions we have to be taking Um, and then there's, an, there's someone who's asking about why teachers are not teaching via Zoom. Um, I'll address that again. Um, you know, it's really, as I said, we're starting instruction over Zoom. Um, it may not look, to, look uh, like whole class instruction all the time. Um, and I think that we know what works really well in the, in the classroom and trying to implement that same structure over zoom um, doesn't always work and i think that as we experiment with zoom we have to use it in a way that's going to be really purposeful that's going to work well for students um, so we're trying some things out and and i think that we need to allow teachers the space to try it out um, i 
And when I do hear that it goes well, it's exciting. Um, and sometimes things are tried and it doesn't go so well. So, um, you know, it's, it's part of a learning process. Um, and I'm glad that, um, I'm glad that, you know, we, the, the, the teachers are doing a wonderful job and, and trying some different things, but, um, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, like I said, we'll, some of these new formats with Zoom will be starting, um, over the next couple of weeks. Thanks, Tricia. Mm -hmm. um, so normally I would end the meeting with a list of dates on our agenda um, for things to keep on your radar. Uh, we don't know what the end of school is going to look like, so we haven't listed any dates, but we'll keep you posted with important things through uh, Tricia's weekly newsletters and through the Bron Bronco Beat. So please be on the lookout for important dates in those places and continue to stay safe and healthy and thank you all for being here tonight. Bye. Thanks, Daya. Bye, everybody. Stay Bye. safe. Stay well. Bye.